right, this is just a guess, an educated guess off the top of the Cardinals Coaches Chronicle podcast. Paul Calvisi, Lisa Matthews. Lisa, you can agree or disagree. I'm thinking the last thing our special guest needs right here, right now, two more new names and faces that he has to learn. I'm just guessing. But did you know that he's memorized basically everyone's name in this building already? I did not know that. I'm dead serious. David Rye, Cardinals receivers coach. I'm just thinking, you know, you got a room full of new guys, receivers, you know, some obviously establish whose uh you know name comes before them and some new guys into the draft some undrafted guys some rookies are coming from rookie minicamp you mean you got receivers guys and names and numbers you have to learn coming out of your ears right now i would imagine first of all the sound is incredible (laughs) (laughs) i'm serious is that unbelievable how do you get this hooked up should we start this by saying this may be the most entertaining (laughs) podcast yet thank you as a guest here thank you you're welcome. What was the question? <laughs> I'm just. I'm is, is that important to you, by the way? The sound. Are you just. Uh, well, I just. You know, there's something about. I've listened to a few podcasts, in my day, and the thing that you do always notice is the sound is remarkable, and it mm-hmm. like they must really tap into the senses. You know, we've got the five senses. I'm going to give a shout out one of them. to our Jim Omohundro, by the way, who runs things here. All right. He is the sound guru, the audio guru, right? And in fact, he's instructing you, David Wright, to, to lean up oh, on lean the up. mic a little bit. Yeah. Don't do yourself a disservice. Jim. Jim doesn't even have his headphones on. <laughs> you know, you do have some coaches. He hears on, everything. I mean, Lisa, we have coaches on this staff with broadcast quality voices, do we oh, not? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Vance Joseph, Cliff Kingsbury. Of course, Cliff. Yep. Who, who am I leaving out? I mean, there's like three or four other guys who get James. up here. James Saxon. James Saxon. Oh, Sax. These guys could be like vo- voiceover Saxon. dudes, you know. No uh, question. You know, they'd be at FM DJs at a smooth jazz station. No yeah. doubt. How about Coach? How about Coach <laughs> Kingsbury? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I was at my, I was at, I was there for his first year at Texas Tech, and I'll never forget two things actually. One was all the girls in the stands at Texas Tech wearing the t-shirts our coach is hotter than your coach <laughs> do you have a t-shirt and no I, oh. I never I never got one uh, how did that but, start <laughs> w- was that just organic that just started like in I, the sororities Where, how did I don't that know, come to I, be I, well that Paul the second thing I was going to tell you is that this is no joke I'm in the office with him and I had come down there and I was like the only guy who was not from Texas and somehow I'm, I'm nearby him and He's got an appointment he's got to go to. And he goes, hey, Rye, come with me. So I hop in the car, and we like, we're driving through campus, and we stop at a sorority house. I'm like, all right, like, we're not delivering pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so we walk in there. There's a whole stage set up, and literally the entire house of girls are there. And he just was there to stand on the stage and say hello where they all screamed for a good four or five wow. minutes, and then we left. And I was like, Wow. So in the name of uh, a fan development, right, and, and, and getting the masses out to the game, he, he would make these sort of stops on, on campus, I see, and just rally the student I, I was only okay. involved in one. But <laughs> I, I know this. I know right. him. He sticks right. to the football. But that was definitely a sidebar when he first became a head coach. Yeah, you definitely probably know more about him than anyone else on the staff. How much does he – just kind of shiver at stories like that just you know him personally and we've gotten to know him a little bit he doesn't like too much of that kind of attention so having to do that no and and that that is the the truth to be crystal clear and I mean this I mean this he is you know he he's got the look he's got you know I mean whatever you call it the style and so gets a lot of attention that he really isn't necessarily he's all football looking for he is all ball I mean he's he, I always say he operates more like a Marine or, you know, a Navy SEAL or something. He, he would have been a great – he would have been great at the Naval Academy. Well, and he grew up in a military household. Yeah, right? father was his head coach and uh, mother – or pardon me, his, his father was his head coach and was a Marine. And, and yeah. And, pretty... and, and, and that's my segue because I saw this in your Wikipedia page that you grew up – going to St. Thomas Academy in Minnesota, a Catholic college prep, military high school, where you were promoted to lieutenant colonel, the second highest ranking officer in the high school. Is that sort of a a connection that you guys have, this military upbringing? You know, I would would say 
I would say the way we are connected, number one, is football. And number two is the, the regiment of how we go about our day. And so does that relate to military? Yes. You know, was but, the military a good match for your personality? I think so. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see, you know, personality and military as mutually exclusive. Okay. I think, um, you know, you can operate in a regimen. And for me, I'm actually much more comfortable with a routine. And if anything, it allows my, you know, personally, my personality to come out more in that environment. All right, so. let, let's go back to how, why you're here. Yeah. How you met Cliff. I think this story if, is so fascinating. For those who do not know anyone that wants something, go after it. This is the story. So please share just your journey to get here. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. <laughs> and Paul. <laughs> really? It was her question. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I do want to say this because it always comes up. Um, I get a new job or some promotion happens, and then the first thing everyone wants to talk about is rewind to walking into Rick Neuheisel's press conference, who I'm still close with today, um, and showing up on the doorstep with Coach Kingsbury at Texas Tech, um, which was 4.45 in the morning, and he was the first person there. It was incredibly strategic you had your scouting report you knew he was That's an early, right. early riser but i and i i want to i do want to say this and i'm i'm passionate about it uh number one i did not have an, a goal to be in the nfl i just love football and it's kind of led here and the second thing is you know people write about that story and i can honestly say i in my mind that is just what you should do if you want to do something. Mm-hmm. And I really mean that. And I mean that for, I mean, I don't know if there's five people listening to this or what, but if there's any people who are thinking about doing something, all I would say is do it. Just do it. And um, you don't have to ask how to do it. Just find out the path that you want to be on and find out where the people are that you need to connect with and then do whatever you need to do. To go connect with them. So leaving and behind a six-figure sales position, you didn't consider that risky for two years as an unpaid intern coach of some sort under Rick Neuheisel? I would consider it more risky to spend 40 years doing something you don't want to do than to, and not to sound, be cheesy or whatever, but I really feel that way. Because if you like uh, what you do, it's not a job. Right. Yeah. No, I, I definitely... Football is hard, and that's great, but I, um, yeah, I never. There's been tough days, tough losses. Uh, the season in Green Bay last year, for example, was a difficult season. and But at the end of the day, I've never woken up and wondered what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. And, that's, and you don't even pay attention to the paycheck. When I was in the old job, I did pay attention, attention mm-hmm. to the paycheck. Because you know, that so, was primarily the reason yeah, you did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People getting motivated yeah. today. How about how you That's ended right. up? Right. Yes. I mean, what about you guys? What are you doing? You're not working, you know, whatever. Oh, come on, we're in sports. Yeah, this, you know, good this, for you. This, this isn't a real gig. Good for you yeah. guys. Yeah, you know. Uh, what about how you ended up in Green Bay? Tell us that story real quick. The call. Yeah. <laughs> um, did Coach mention that or no? No. No. No, I think you were the only one who sort of dropped a little bit about it way back when you met the media. But most of the viewers and listeners right now probably – have not heard the story, how you ended up in Green Bay after one year at Texas Tech? Yeah, one year at Texas Tech. You know, that was my sixth year in coaching, and I was fortunate enough to get on staff with Coach Kingsbury, and I was working with him and the quarterbacks, and then we, we, you know, I was working with him and the quarterbacks, and then he promoted me to the receiver coach. And Coach McCarthy is a Long story short, he keeps a Rolodex. He's constantly looking for young coaches that he would potentially bring in to Green Bay. And um, so he got my name from someone that I had crossed paths with. And his name is actually Joel Hilgenberg, who's in the Hall of Fame, the Ring of Fame with the New Orleans Saints, who is a guy who I just met when I was a graduate assistant at the University of Iowa. And he was, I mean, he's he's the dude from Big Lebowski. That, that's who. <laughs> That's right. who Hilgi is. I would say Hilgenberg. That's like has uh, 
real fame in, in offensive line lore, doesn't it? Hilgenberg, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. They're, the the three brothers um, all played, and their father played and also coached in Minnesota. But Hilge and I crossed paths, and then he, ended, he ends up being a – I was just helping him learn how to break down film, and he ends up getting hired by the Green Bay Packers. Like, true story, that's what happened. And I showed up three years later on Cliff's doorstep, got hired, Coach McCarthy's asking the whole staff in Green Bay about young coaches around the country. And so basically, Hilge threw my resume on a desk, and I ended up getting an interview and getting the job. So, But yeah. the catalyst was the call. The catalyst was the call, and he called. The story goes he called Coach Kingsbury, Cliff, and um, both young coaches, one a head coach, and Coach Kingsbury calls me on the phone and goes, hey, David, you're not going to believe who just called me. And I said, who? He said, Mike McCarthy. And I'm like, oh, no way. That's great. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, yeah, I thought he was calling for me, and he said he was calling for you. And I didn't really believe him, and some time went by, and then Coach McCarthy called me, and in his Pittsburgh accent, you know, he was like, <laughs> hey, David, Mike McCarthy, you know, and I, I honestly thought somebody was messing with me. And <laughs> sure. So I went back up there, started back at the bottom of the co- totem pole, and then, um, you know, now we're here. Now we're here. Well, we have some questions coming in from fans. Wanting to know a little bit more about you, David Rye. Are you mm-hmm. ready? Yes. This is from Edward Bedsell. He wants to know which wide receiver skills will Larry be able to help the rookies with most mm. as you guys are back on the field? Well, first of all, um, thank you for the question. It was Edward. Edward. Thank you, Edward. And, you know, Fitz, number one, he's an incredible example. I'm talking about just the way he operates. And, um, it's the sanctuary in our room, right? I mean, we got, I'm running the room, and then you've got Fitz with 16 years, second all time, um, all time to Jerry Rice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, incredible wealth of knowledge and incredible example. Like, he's the type of coach who, or player that continually wants to be coached, and he has an open arena. You know, and we all do to speak in the room. But to chime in, and, and he gave some incredible advice today. So number one, mindset and approach. You know, how to approach every day as a professional. That's the number one thing he's going to help, you know, set by example and, you know, shepherding some of these young receivers. And then just the technicalities of playing the game. And we, you know, the way I coach it is actually from co- the Coach Sullivan coaching tree. Um, so it's incredible to be back with him because I learned from a guy who learned from him. So I call him Mr. Miyagi. He's, he's yeah. the he's yeah, kind of the OG. Yep. Yeah, Jerry Sullivan. Yep, former and, Cardinals receiving coach, long time fixture in this league. Yes, uh, and incredible. And you know, it's a special time in the room. You've got Coach Sullivan, Jerry Sullivan. For me to be with him, getting it from the horse's mouth, I'm learning things that I'm adjusting now. And Fitz was with him a long time ago. And so, you know, he's, he's later in his career, and Fitz is later in his career. And in a way, I'm actually up and coming in a very specific way to train the receiving core. And Fitz is able to speak on it from experience, and Sully is as well. And so what you have is clearly laid out expectations for practice and our, our main core drills. And then through Fitz's experience at the end of practice, we'll get together and work on various drills to help young players feel the sensation of making a speed turn, you know, things to kind of enhance, you know, your lower body and the ability to play with balance Mm -hmm. and body posture and get in and out of breaks. I mean, he's, he's going to be awesome. Is the classified info, what sort of advice Larry imparted to the group today? The one today, I mean, it's actually pretty famous advice. Um, <laughs> or maybe another hey, Larry, piece of advice. Larry, you, you know, uh, yeah. No, let's. I'll tell you later. Okay. okay. Right. It's great advice, but, and I actually, I actually want to keep it in the room for the guys. Yeah, that makes sense. What yeah. advice would you give all these receivers, these young receivers who are going to try and make an impression in rookie camp and try and impress their position coach, David Rye, receivers coach? What can they do to impress you in this rookie mini camp, for example? Stick to the process. You know, this is 
it's the highest level and we I love reminding us of that coaches and players I mean we there is no higher level of competition in football at least that I'm aware of you know unless there's some league in Russia that (laughs) you haven't told me about this is the pinnacle but so it's the highest level and everyone has plays and everyone has similar plays you could sit up there and you could you could find the similar schemes but the difference is and I'll take it till the end of my career is fundamentals and technique the actual technique and footwork and fundamentals you use to whoop the man across from you Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day that is what happens and the ones who are the best at it and the most consistent at their fundamentals and their technique are going to win and all that is is habits Mm that's literally what it is you got to build the right habits and it's our job my job to hold them to that and um i mean that's the hardest part it's the simplest answer and it's the hardest thing to actually do and i mean that goes I mean, you know it with anything in life. If you want to get up at 4 every day, 4 a.m., it's easy to say. But to actually get up at 4 when the alarm clock goes off and build that habit, like, that's hard to do. Is that the time you get up then? I do hit snooze. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. Hey, but it's always by 4.30. That's right. It's you, always by yeah, 4.30. Yeah. You do seem to be very detail-oriented. Even I saw online um, a drill that you do with the jug machine called the man hands where – the receivers are this close to the ball mm-hmm. in different angles and learning how to catch with their hands. And you had one guy without gloves on do it back in Green Bay. I mean, are you trying to do different kinds of drills just to hone in on the, the type of detail that you want them to? Like you were just saying, the pattern, the habit. Is that some maybe innovative stuff that you try yes. to pull out? Yeah, but nice. Appreciate that. Yes. By the way, the man, you too. The, the, man, the, you too. the man hand hey. sounds like a uh, no, Seinfeld awesome. episode, Lisa's, by the way. Lisa yeah, is a yeah, professional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, doing your homework. The First of all, I give credit where credit's due. Randall Cobb. Yes. I got that drill from him. Okay. okay. And um, another vet. And so we, will, we haven't brought out the jugs no. yet. I mean, we've been hammering footwork since we started. But we will, yeah, we will definitely get out the jugs and work man hands we might have just frame in the football I'm telling you it's like a seinfeld episode right the whole man hands man thing hands. i have to look that up <laughs> what, <laughs> big, what big seinfeld fan what probably. happens when you have an extremely athletic quarterback i.e kyler murray what does that mean for your receivers phase just- phase two so they um yeah you got to be ready and the only way to train that is during practice um but there is the design of the play and there's the time clock of the play um and there's break points for each receiver and if we're doing it correctly one breaks then the next breaks then the next breaks right and the offensive line knows what that time clock is too now we all know it there are plays that are off schedule and extended time clock plays Mm -hmm. and that would be phase two right so the platform phase is in the pocket, and then once he breaks the pocket and breaks contain, now we're in phase two. And what we need to see on the practice field is a huge increase in urgency when that happens. And Tom um, gave us some great parameters and Coach Kingsbury for how we're going to start to work that. Um, and we did it in Green Bay, and as you all know, Aaron was very good at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, Kyler, we will train him in a similar fashion and train the perimeter in a similar fashion, but the only way to get better at it is during practice. So, yes, that is noted. Yes, <laughs> and you have the experience, at least, that is with mm-hmm. Rogers. We have a question coming in from, I hope I'm saying this right, Bettina Wade. What's the story of all of your bracelets that you have on your wrist? Oh, can you show those to the yeah. camera? Yeah, Hold those we up can if do you that. Don't mind. There we go. What's her name? Is there yeah. a story, Bettina? Bettina. 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 Interesting. Yeah, it's okay. These these ones. I mean, can I say it? They're Jesus. Yeah. Can we say yeah. that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Good. Okay. So these are divine mercy bracelets. Okay. Um, Jesus, I trust in you, and I got those at a pretty special place in Wisconsin, and Catholic. Um, this one is my uncle, my godfather, who has ALS. An incredible man, um, Dan Mulhern, 
And then these, I have two uh, really close friends who are attorneys, James and Paris Foster, okay? Incredible people who are on a three to five year, basically, you know, it's, it's not a mission. They're with International Justice Mission who they're basically stopping sexual violence versus women and children in Kampala, Uganda. Wow. So I went there for three weeks and um, it's pretty remarkable. It, it puts mm-hmm. in perspective. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So do you ever Scoring take them a off? touchdown versus, right. you know. Yeah. Um, no, I actually Leave them don't. Off. Wash them. Okay. Wash them. <laughs> Just took a shower. Because <laughs> I made you. <laughs> so they're extra clean. <laughs> That's right. Belinda. Yeah. Or what was it? Bettina. No. Bettina. I hope Bettina. I, we're saying that right. Uh, that was a prerequisite for this interview. You, you mandated that he I shower. Did. But they, I will say this. I'm not I, sure I want to know the backstory on that, but anyway. Well, you know, just personal hygiene. <laughs> and Lisa said to be well, sure to clean up after practice. He's actually, yeah, please clean up. Yeah, We have to sit in a room with you. But he's been, we haven't gotten to this because there's so much, but he's been on TV before, correct? You've told me you're pretty much a pro. I, no, <laughs> no, no, no. H- hence his, you know, he knew the sound right off the top. It was yeah. quality sound. That's why he knew. Yeah. He's, yeah, well, kind of kind of sewer that. Okay, go ahead. Let's get into some of your new weapons coming in. Um, who are you most excited about from this draft class? Obviously three receivers, but between the, the three of them. Come on, I, it's Andy it? Isabella. Come it. on, let's it. ask the you about speed. Andy Isabella. Okay. We want to see the guy with the speed. First of all, love talking about him. And, and I will say this, the room the men that are already in there are doing a great job, right. and it's going to be competitive. Um, and But the three young guys who are coming in, they're all three totally different, and I love them for different reasons. And it's, you know, Steve did an incredible job, Kime, of sending us out on the road. So I actually worked out personally twice each one of those young men mm-hmm. and spent a lot of time with them. So there's, it's, it's not recruiting. I mean, we pick them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it almost felt that way. And, and you have a lot of experience doing that from your college days, obviously. Yes, 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 yeah. But totally different receivers. Andy is, I mean, if you haven't seen him, wait till you see him. I mean, he is a ball of muscle, and he can flat out go. Mm-hmm. And his size and stature is a little deceiving. You know, you put on these clips, and there's a lot of teams that just didn't expect him to run up, run up on him, them like that. So... He's going to be – he's an inside player, and he is he is tough, and he's diligent, and he's smart, and, I mean, he loves football. I mean, he loves it, and he's he's already studying it and getting ready to come in. But dependable guy who can light up the middle of the field, you know. And then you look at Hakeem Butler, right, from Iowa State, and Hakeem, again, mentally tough. Like this guy, they all have the right mindset. And he brings, you know, size. He's he's just your big, rangy guy who's got a ton of physicality. And we've already talked about it. He's just raw. His footwork is raw. And we're going to train him to really increase his route ability. And, and, but as far as mindset, ability, length, hands. He ran I mean, a 4 4 8. Ran a 4 4 8. You know, so he's got. Yeah, I mean, Hakeem, he'll be he'll be an outside guy to start, and mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to training him and working with him. And then Keyshawn, Keyshawn Johnson from Fresno State is, I mean, Keyshawn is, like, the guy's smooth. I mean, you could put a glass of water on his head, and he can run 80 yards <laughs> without spilling a drop. You know, he is, he's like a motorcycle. Like, it's all one piece. The release, the stem, the top, he, kept, he runs right through the football. You know, you see, he ran, I don't know what he ran. He ran a four or five. Doesn't matter. And the guy plays full speed throughout the whole thing. And an easy depiction is you've, we've all seen receivers run fast, stop, catch the ball, then run fast, right? Well, his play speed is incredibly fast, just the way he runs routes. And his hands, I think he caught 95 out of 120 passes thrown to him, mm. which is. I mean, you think about that, it's remarkable. Yeah. And broke all Devontae Adams' records at Fresno State. Who you know real well, Devontae I, Adams, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, Devontae for sure is a huge supporter of Keyshawn. Um, but Devontae had Derek Carr. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And can you guys name yeah. Keyshawn's quarterback? No, no. no idea. Right. So right. he's he's been incredibly productive, and they all got the right mindset. So I'm really looking forward to it. This week they're coming on in. Uh, how's Arizona treating you? You know, we, we love Green Bay and we love Lambeau, but let's face it, they're two different climates. No. Guys, I know. No. I, 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 they're not, yeah. I love it. First of all, I need, to, I need a little more sunscreen. <laughs> looking a little red in you here. It might the, be this best. You, know, you need Coach's hat. Yeah, yeah right. I need Coach's hat. That's but right. I, uh, Paul, I love it. Like I, I told the guys on the first day, I said, hey, look, it's either the Arizona Cardinals. Like, we need to get this done. It's either the Cardinals or Chandler High School. Like, I, I, <laughs> like I, I ain't going, you know, I love this son. Right. That's but, good, that's good. yeah, it's, it's been really good. Because it's location, location, location right now for, uh, for Coach Ride. That's good. Okay, any other outstanding questions there, Lisa? Anything else hanging out there? You know what? You know. I'm sure we do. You know, the Desert Ford dealers are a big sponsor of the Arizona Cardinals. I want to ask you about the Shelby Mustang. But, you know, once again, we'll have a breakout That's session afterwards. We'll, yeah. Yeah. we'll do that on our own a little bit later. You <laughs> there know are a few questions you coming questions. in you know, from Facebook that are saying, is this John Gruden? Hey, do you ever get that? Have you ever oh. been told you look like John Gruden? I Yes, I have heard that multiple times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and no. how do you how do you receive that? Should we should we you know shy away from that? What what you know let us in? Are you okay? I with don't that? know. I how should I receive that? Can oh, you we do have a lot of we do have a lot of people saying that. That's I wouldn't funny. have thought that actually. You know, Cliff Kingsbury did a great John Gruden impersonation by the way a few weeks ago in here because uh, Gruden showed up at one of his coaches' clinics at the Biltmore at the owners' meetings, and it's supposed to be like high school coaches in the coaches' clinic, and there's Gruden front and center asking uh, Cliff Kingsbury whether they were going to take Kyler Murray or not. So he did, uh, you know, Coach did a great impersonation oh of Gruden. Oh, my gosh. I probably used to yeah. have it down. Yeah. Not, not quite Caliendo, but it was pretty solid. You know? Man, not quite. I got to tell you. <laughs> there you go. It's good. You had the Chucky face going. You had the Chucky face going. Man. Yeah. <laughs> that right. He looks a lot like yeah. Gruden. <laughs> Will the players impersonate you pretty soon by the end of the year? Somebody, yeah, I mean, somebody's going to do a coach impersonation. Yeah. We had I had Trevor Davis who played at Cal last year, and um, first of all, great. I, I love my job, and um, like these are incredible. It's so great to work with these incredible men who are the best of the best, and um, been around a lot of you know guys that want to win and want to train, and it's so awesome. Like I am so thankful for it, and I'm I'm only saying that because I'm thinking about those men and the men here. And I was talking to Fitz today, who you know was with Devonte Adams over the weekend, and they got to talk. And it's it's a special league, and it's a special position, and it is you know we all feel blessed, and the opportunity is incredible, and um. Like I'm not trying to get sentimental here. Oh, please I'm just do. keeping it real. <laughs> no, it's the not. it's um and that needs to be taken seriously. And um that's why I'm so thankful to have a guy like Larry Fitzgerald in the room, you know, that is so unique. And I was thankful to have Randall Cobb and Devontae Adams last year to set the tone for the rest of the guys because that room can impact the game in a major way. Larry Fitzgerald, even a guy like Christian Kirk, too. Just what have you seen from him and working with him so far? Obviously not a veteran yet, but, I mean, he'll, he'll have experience mm-hmm. at this at this state. Next. Yeah, this is good, and these are the questions I love because it's – Christian's so impressive, and I, I was very impressed with him coming out last year in the draft. Um, I thought that was a great pick. His – you know, he's got incredible spatial awareness and a great antenna inside especially – he can play outside, but it, it's not as much to his advantage to play out there. Okay, See that? That's a double move right there. If you just have him running routes outside, his, his stride, he turns over quickly, but it's not real long. Mm-hmm. right? So DBs try to hover over him. But you put him inside and let him use his leverage and his insteps and his route ability. Um, and you got to be smart to play in there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of traffic and things happening. He is... He gets it. You can talk to him about what you're trying to get done in a release and then as you develop the route at the top, and you can train him separately and watch him just piece it together on the field. Mm. Um, he's smart. He's, he gets it. He can see it. Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't say a whole lot. He's, he wants to work. I yeah. mean, he's, Pretty he's a guy. tough guy. David Johnson, pretty close oh. to having legit wide receiver skills. Oh David my Hunt. gosh, man! Yeah, what a beast! Yeah, he 
Dave, first of all, I was at Iowa when we decided to not take him. Sorry, Coach Ferentz. <laughs> and he went to Northern Iowa. Oh. And can you imagine that? Have like, you just talked to him about that? <laughs> Just looking at him <laughs> right, being like, right. no, nah, we're good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how it goes. But I, like 600 like, pounds. In fairness to my alma mater and Coach Ferentz and the whole staff and all of us, I was involved. Um, he, you know, there was a lot of backs there, but really impressive. And, you know, I'm, I'm watching all the receivers, and there's been a couple routes where I'm like, wow. It's a running back out there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm sure you're excited to use him. Yes, definitely. We got. And some the fans are excited to see him. Yeah. Catch the ball. <laughs> yes. Well, it, look, we start with Larry. I'll end it with Larry. It was a three-win season a year ago, and there in December on a Thursday practice was Larry Fitzgerald diving for a catch in practice. Mm-hmm. And you're like, here's a guy in his 15th season going to the Hall of Fame. It's a three-win campaign, and he's diving for a ball in practice. And just what that says to everybody else out there on that field, I can only imagine it just makes your job so much easier as a coach when that guy, who's the guy, is doing that on a practice field. Well, he, he's the epitome of the better you get, the better you have to be. You know, in this mm-hmm. league – the better you get, the better you have to be. To so live up to your standard. Yeah, the, the matchups, now they're going to put the guy on you to try to stop you, right? Or they're going to double-team you. Or when the, it's third and long or red zone or situational football, you, you know, and we know we're going to throw the ball to Larry. I mean, he, he knows that, and he would tell you that himself. He's aware of it. So the thing that's so impressive is he comes in here like a rookie every day. I mean, he still does, <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. Is this offense a good fit for Larry Fitzgerald? Yes. Is yes. that a legitimate question, Definitely. or is, is, is that a Because a lot of people are trying to figure out what is the offense, what's it going to look like? Will it is it akin to a college offense, and does that fit Larry Fitzgerald? I I mean, I was in college, a few different colleges, and a co- you know, I, I don't know what a college offense is, but I know what this offense is, and um. I know that we're going to stick to it, period. And, um, you know, that's something I definitely remind Coach Kingsbury about, you know, to be him because he's good and he knows what it looks like. (laughs) And um, he's worked the system in and out. So he knows what he wants. He knows the adjustments that need to be made. It's going to be good for everybody. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And uh, it will be new. It'll 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 look new and feel new. Mm-hmm. And um, it's also a fun offense to play in. But it does it. It's not missing, you know, basic concepts that you need in football versus the basic coverages. You know, um, so if, it's not unsound in any way. No, mm-hmm. no. And I think a lot of people have tried to. You know, it started with Hal Mummy and, and Mike Leach, and there's been a lot of branches, you know. Speaking of faith, it's kind of like the Bible, right? Sure. And his his is unique. It's his. I mean, it's like if you ask him, he wouldn't call it the air raid. I mean, it is his. We've noticed that here on yes, this show. We learned that the hard it. way. Mm-hmm. Don't call it the air is raid. Is that? Yeah, don't yeah, do that. Don't do that. Yeah, because it's not. It's not. It's not. Um, it's his. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Well, speaking of being singular, right? David Rye himself. We appreciate it. And we look forward to the season. And uh, we look forward to this weekend. I mean, six, dare I say, maybe seven receivers make this final roster and a lot of competition. I know. I'm, I'm hoping for eight. Eight. Oh. <laughs> hey, there we go. Yeah, I'm always, right. I'm always, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, yeah. man. How, you th- how do you think we got three? That's right. Four yeah. with AJ. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Coach, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. There you go. David Rye, Cardinals receivers coach on the Coach's Chronicle podcast from the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center.